Good morning, and welcome to this service of worship on this Sunday, January the 17th. As we gather together uh, here or in the comfort of your own homes, we welcome to worship at Knox Presbyterian Church in Walkerton. One announcement to share with you this morning, and that is that this afternoon at 2 o'clock, you're invited to join in a congregational meeting via Zoom in order to discuss the sale of the manse. Your invitation to the Zoom went out on Tuesday, and so you should have it by now. If not, please call your elder for more information. Those are the announcements this morning, and I invite you to join us now in our call to worship. Before we were born, God knew us. God knit us together in the womb. God searches out our paths and tracks us along our way. So we praise God because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is nowhere we can go where God is not with us. How, How wonderful, wonderful are, are all God's, God's works. works. Let, Let us worship, worship God, God together. together. And this morning I light the Christ candle as we continue in this season of Epiphany, the season of light. The Christ candle is burning and reminding us that the light of Christ, the light of the world, is with us always. Thanks be to God. Let us sing, sing together our hymn, God of Mercy, God of Grace. Saving health extend unto us remote as dead. Let the people praise you, Lord, be by all that live adored. Let the nation shout and sing glory to their gracious King. At your feet their tribute pay, and your holy will obey. Let the people praise you, Lord, earth shall then its fruits afford. Unto us your blessing give, we to you devoted live. All below and all above, one joy and light, light and love. Join me in a time of prayer. God ever creating, God ever loving, God ever leading. You are stillness when we are frantic. You are truth when we are confused and perplexed. You are freedom when we are paralyzed by fear. You send us light when we stumble in the darkness. You are love when we are lonely and empty. For all that you are all that you have been, and all that you will be for us. We praise you, Creator, Christ, and Spirit. And we turn to you now in worship to listen for your voice and to seek your way for us. Desiring to be a people transformed, we bring to you our prayers of confession. Merciful God, you call us to fullness of life, but we have too often settled for much less. We have wandered from your ways and wasted your gifts. We ignore the pain of others, and we turn our faces from injustice. At times, we have hidden from the truth, 
especially when it calls us to do what we may be afraid to do. We have given up in despair when problems around us seem overwhelming. Forgive us our small faith, O God. Give us courage to listen and to respond when you call. Amen. Believe the good news. In Christ Jesus, God has offered us forgiveness for all our sins and shortcomings. Trust that this forgiveness is for you and know that God's steadfast love and grace endure forever. Amen. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace before, peace us, before us, peace, peace behind, behind us, peace, peace under, under our, our feet, feet, peace within, within us, us, peace over us. us. Let, Let all, all around us be peace. peace. The, the peace, peace of, Christ of Christ be with you, you and with you and with you. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear Lord, close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, if you please. Daily walking close to thee. Oh, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. world of toil and snares. If I falter, Lord, who cares? Oh, with me my burden shares, and none but Thee, dear Lord, none but Thee.
to our family time this morning, and I have something to share with you. It's a little uh, grass woven basket, and the story of how I came to have it is, is what I want to share with you this morning. Years ago, my sisters and I, when we would be visiting our uh, grandmother and our great grandparents, um, they had a large home with a, a third story um, attic, a huge attic that had all kinds of interesting rooms in it. And uh, we could hardly wait to get up to the attic uh, when we went to visit to see what kinds of uh, interesting things we were going to find in our adventures in the attic. Of course, some of the rooms were rather dark and dusty and full of a lot of um, cobwebs and spiders, and we didn't know what else. So we, um, we were a little bit afraid of some of it, but we would go up the stairs as quick as we could, saying, come and see, come and see. And we would find treasures like this. And this was one of the treasures that uh, we found at one point. And I adopted this as my treasure, and I've kept it many, many years. So it reminds me of those times when we used to explore in the attic at my grandmother's house uh, many years ago. What a treasure to find and to have. In our story today, we hear the words, come and see, in the Bible story today. Come and see. Jesus is inviting the others to come, his friends and followers, to come and see what it would be about if they were going to be followers of Jesus. And um, it would be an adventure for them to come and, and see what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. And so I want to share with you today that those words are words that are uh, extended to each of us. They are words of invitation to all of us to come and see what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is a portion of Psalm 139, verses 1 to 6, and verses 13 to 18. We'll read responsively on the screen. O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. You made all my delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was being woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't, I can't even, even count, count them. them. They, they outnumber the, the grains, grains of sand. And, and when, when I wake, wake up, you, you are, are still, still with me. Amen. And our gospel reading this morning is found in the gospel of John, reading at the beginning of that gospel in chapter 1, reading verses 43 to 51. So here we are in this early part of Epiphany as Jesus um, we remember there was a baptism, uh, I believe, uh, last week. And now Jesus is starting out um, on his public ministry. And this is what he does to begin with. He goes and he finds others that will go with him on this journey, this adventure of faith. Reading from verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. 
Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Amen. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join to sing a favorite hymn of mine, 634, Will You Come and Follow Me? Verses 1, 4, and 5 we're singing today. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let me love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if he but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Though my light and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. Your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Come and see. It's so good. It's so good to hear those words of the psalmist this morning, reminding us that nothing about us is unknown to our Creator God. And we find comfort in knowing that God is in the midst of us, in good times and in bad times. God is with us uh, when a frightening virus can upend our lives when the world is turned upside down, when political divisions and greed tear us apart, when people fail to care for each other, when we fail to honor the earth and all of its wonderful gifts, and when we think that we ourselves have all the answers. I need to be reminded often that God is still with me, still ready to listen, still ready to pick me up, put me back on my feet. Help me to be ready to continue the journey ahead. Barbara Brown Taylor is one of my favorite preachers and writers, and she offers us these words about our place in God's world. She says, by the grace of God, I am being mended, and God has called me to be a mender too. 
since many threads are stronger than one, God has put me on a sewing team. Day by day, our job is to hunt the places where the world is ripped apart and bend over the damage to do what we can. Every good deed, every kind word, the truer our aim, the smaller our stitches, and the longer our patch will hold. We made plenty of the rips ourselves, and some of the worst ones show evidence of having been mended many times before. But that does not seem to discourage anyone. Mending is how we continue ourselves to be mended, and we would not trade the work for anything in the world. In scripture, we hear many times how God calls us to join in a journey of mending. It's a challenge, it's a responsibility to discern what God is calling us to do, to figure out how God is calling us to follow Jesus in the church and in our daily work, in our relationships and in our family life. We have many choices, many options, but we want to listen for God's voice and direction so that we can choose what God is calling us to do, what is helpful to do what is beneficial and to do what is best. What is God calling me to do in my life? What is God calling you to do in your life? Good questions, no matter what our age or our stage of life. God may decide to call you to something new or to look at something with brand new eyes. When you do what you do every day, how does God use you to make one small part of the world a little more like the kingdom of God? When you do what you do every day, how does God use you to share God's love in the world, in, in word and in action in the world with one another with one or more of God's beloved children. Because we have the Spirit of God living within us, we have the power to be the presence of Christ to our children, to our co-workers, to our customers, to our students, our patients, our neighbors. Of course, we could just go about our work and get things done and put our paycheck in the bank. We have the freedom to do anything, but not everything is helpful. Not everything is what God is calling us to do. Not everything is our calling and our vocation. One of the things I noticed in the gospel reading today was the unusual reaction of Nathaniel when he met Jesus for the very first time. At first, the story sounds like many others from the gospel. Jesus is going along at the beginning of his ministry, and he's calling people to come and follow him. Some are dropping their fishing nets to go out on the road with this itinerant preacher. Others are leaving behind other occupations for a new vocation with Jesus. In the town of Galilee, Jesus comes across Philip. Jesus says to him, follow me, and he does. But first he goes and finds his friend Nathaniel, and tells him about Jesus. And Philip says, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son, you know the one from Nazareth. Nathaniel's skeptical about when, when he hears that Jesus is from the backwater town of Nazareth, but he decides to come and, and see what Philip is so excited about. But when Jesus sees Nathanael coming towards him, he doesn't just say, follow me, this time as he did with Philip. Instead, Jesus says, well, here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Jesus basically looks at Nathanael and declares that he knows already Nathanael is a good man. How do you know me? Nathanael asks. How do you know that I'm not deceitful? And Jesus explains that he had the opportunity to observe Nathanael's behavior before Philip called him. And Nathanael is amazed at this. 
Jesus tells Nathanael that knowing him, well, it's just the beginning. You will see greater things than these, Jesus declares. The psalmist reminds us this morning that God knows us completely. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, even before a word is on my tongue. O oh Lord, you know it completely. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. God knows our gifts. God knows what we struggle with. God knows what makes us anxious and worried. God knows our full potential. Today, wherever you are on your journey, remember that God knows you, and God loves you, and God has plans for you, and God will call you. May our ears be open to hear. May our hearts be open to respond in joyful obedience. Amen. In today's stories from scripture, God called people to give their lives in service for God's holy purposes. May the gifts we offer today serve God's holy purpose in the church and in the world for the sake of Christ our Lord. Let us worship God with our offering. God of new possibilities, in Christ you create a future for each one of us, giving us strength and opportunities to flourish in our faith. Thank you for these gifts. Use them and use us to create new possibilities in the world for those who are uncertain about what the future holds. Our gifts are a token of our trust that you hold the future for us all. Amen. So we come to the prayers of the people and concluding with the Lord's Prayer this morning, I just want to say a word of thanks to those who are, who are gathered here to help lead the worship, our, our music team and our techni technical team um, who put the service together for us each week. I appreciate your gifts and the gift of your time as well. Let us pray. God of all life, and God of each life. Each week our prayers combine with those of people in many different places. We face many different challenges, and also a common challenge. Responding to the pandemic, though in so many different contexts. We thank you for honoring all our prayers with the gift of your spirit, so that we can find strength and wisdom we need in you. We remember before you today people living face to face with war and violence in those places where hatred has been stirred up and fear stalks people even on their own streets. And we pray for all those displaced by violence, seeking refuge among us or in camps or communities around the world. God, speak to us a word of peace and embrace us with your love. We remember before you today people living face to face with economic uncertainty. We pray for those who have lost their jobs or worry what, what may happen as this year unfolds. God, speak to us a word of reassurance and embrace us with your love. We remember before you today people living face to face with discrimination and social prejudice 
for those who are bullied at school, at work, or at home, for those who are made ashamed of who they are, God, speak to us a word of dignity and embrace us with your love. We remember before you today people living face to face with illness and suffering. We pray for those who are struggling with disability, made more complex in these days. And for those who know grief or anxiety, especially those who are cut off from the comfort or support of others by our many months of pandemic isolation. God, speak to us a word of healing and embrace us with your love. We remember before you today, people divided by differences of race or creed or culture or gender or generation. And we pray for all those who seek to build bridges of understanding and cooperation across all our differences. God, speak to us a word of reconciliation and embrace us with your love. We remember before you today your whole creation and its many vulnerable facets and faces. Teach us how to care for the rips and the tears in the fabric of your world, the world you love so, that we may live together wisely. God, speak to us a word of wisdom and embrace us with your love. And so, joining our voices to Jesus' followers around the world, we pray the words he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, come. thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Let us conclude our worship this morning as we sing four verses from Lord, You Give the Great Commission, 778. And preach the word Lest the church neglect its mission And the gospel go unheard Help us witness to your purpose With renewed integrity With the Spirit's gifts empower us for the work of ministry. Lord, you call us to your service in my name, baptize and teach that the world may trust your promise. Life abundant, men for each. Give us all Empower us for the work of ministry. Lord, you bless with words assuring, I am with you to the Restoring 
I wish you all a good week now. Let us go to be the hands and the feet of Christ in our world. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all today and always. Amen. Thank you.